going guys so I'm on the quest to go see the new Candyman movie uh, I haven't been to the theater since like 2019 I don't remember the last movie that I saw in the theater but that's COVID's fault right um, so I went to my local studio movie grill uh, granted the mall that it was in is kind of sketchy and it wasn't doing so well but I think COVID pretty much killed off all the remaining stores in there so yeah I just got back from there and uh, it's just abandoned, and yeah, it's there's nobody there at all, and it's permanently closed, so uh, now I'm going to outsource it and go to AMC, I guess. I hope AMC's still around. Alright, well, if you saw the original 1992 Candyman film starring Tony Todd, Jordan Peele's is a sequel to that one, where Todd plays the Candyman, an entity that appears and kills you after you look in the mirror and say his name five times. So the film starts off with Anthony McCoy, a struggling artist who is trying to find new inspiration, and his girlfriend, Brianna, who is the director of an art gallery. One night, Brianna's brother visits and shares the story of Helen Lyle, a woman who went to the Cabrini Green projects in Chicago in search of Candyman. He explains that she stole a child and took it to a bonfire with the intention of sacrificing it. But the baby was saved right before Helen burned to death. Of course they leave out that it was actually Candyman who intended on the sacrifice, and Helen actually saved the child. Anyway, with this new information, Anthony quickly falls down the rabbit hole and becomes obsessed with the story. He even visits the site where Cabrini Green once stood and gets stung by a bee while taking some photos. Anthony then meets a local shop owner named Burke, who tells him about an encounter he had with the entity as a child. So back in the late 70s, there was a man named Sherman Fields who liked to pass out candy to the neighborhood kids, giving him the name Candyman. One day, a razor blade was found in one of the kids' candy, so he had to go into hiding to avoid persecution. Young Burke ran into Fields one day and accidentally alerted the police to their location. And when they arrived, they beat Sherman to death, only to later find out more razor blades had appeared in more candy and that he was actually innocent. Burke then stated that Sherman came back as the entity known as Candyman. Wait just a minute here. Sherman? What about the original Candyman? Did Jordan Peele like retcon his origin or something? Oh, wait a minute. Nope. So then, Burke tells him the story of Daniel Robillet, who was killed in the 19th century after knocking up a rich man's white daughter. Yep, there's the OG one. So after hearing this, Anthony creates an art exhibit called Say My Name which is a tribute to Candyman. Around this time, the bee sting on his hand has turned into a giant scab that nearly consumes his whole hand. And then later, after his exhibit doesn't really get the response he expected, people start to mysteriously die. Anthony then visits his estranged mom's house, and she explains that Anthony is the baby that Candyman tried to sacrifice. After hearing this, Anthony falls into a trance-like state and wanders around Cabrini Green until he ends up in a local abandoned church. Burke then kidnaps Brianna and brings her to the church, where he reveals his master plan of having the police kill Anthony after he's framed for all the murders and then have him come back as Candyman to restart the legend as an instrument of vengeance as opposed to racial injustice. So apparently there's like multiple Candymen and if you die from some sort of racial injustice, you just come back as a candy man, I guess. Anyway, so Burke then saws off Anthony's hand and jams a hook onto the stump, completing the process. Brianna manages to escape, but then Burke chases her into some row houses where she ends up stabbing him to death, like, a hundred fucking times. Oh shit, does that mean Burke's gonna come back as a candy man? No, 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 just, just hold on. So then the police show up and kill Anthony and put Brianna in the back of a police car, where she uses the rearview mirror to summon Candyman. Suddenly, Anthony appears and slaughters all of the cops, and as more show up, Anthony then transforms into Daniel and simply says, Tell. Everyone. The End Alright, well, this is an interesting reboot slash sequel. I mean, I guess I kind of see what Jordan Peele was trying to do, but... It almost fucked with, like, the original formula. Um, I knew going in that Anthony was going to be the baby from the original one, and that he would somehow start to become the Candyman through the course of the film. I mean, that was kind of apparent in the trailers and stuff. But it did throw me for a loop when there ended up being multiple Candymen, 
So I guess if you're a black guy and you die from racial injustice, you'll just come back as a candy man? Is that like a standard thing? All right, Jordan Peele, whatever you say. I mean, I'm not knocking it because that kind of stuff does happen and it's really fucked up. And so I get that he's trying to like put it more out in like the open and like bring more awareness to it, which I'm down for. It's just it doesn't really pertain to Candyman, so just stop trying to blend them together. Alright guys, well I hope you like this review, and if you haven't seen the film yet, just hold off until it comes to streaming. Trust me. And on that note, I'll see you on the next one.